See that? We're going to use that on this project. Notice a nice, clean, blank piece of paper. We're going to fill that in with all the materials that we're going to need on this project. We're going to list the different type of tools we're going to need so that when we go to the store and we get all of our stuff ready, we want to make sure that we got everything ready so that when you start your project, I don't want you having to stop in the middle of it to have to go to the store to get something that you forgot. So we're going to make this list, figure out all the steps, all the different things that you need, write them all down on this piece of paper. If you need another sheet, guess what? We got another sheet underneath there. It's always nice to have a little clipboard ready. Then you can make a little material list too. You can take that to the store, check off the items. Don't just think you're going to go to the store, get everything by remembering everything because let me tell you, it's impossible to do that. So let this be your friend and use it. Remember that little clipboard I had? Well here it is. I've made out a little list, measured up all my materials, made sure I wrote down everything that I thought I needed to get at the store. When I go to the store, I'll look at all this stuff and each thing I get, I'm going to mark off. So this is how I do my projects. That way I can make sure I don't forget any of the materials I need at the store. Here's some of the items we're going to be using for this project. Let's take a closer look. I'm going to use this to protect the flooring. This is called craft paper, also known as building paper or resin paper. This will protect the floor when I do the sheetrock mud and also the painting. I find this works a lot better than dragging around drop cloths getting sheetrock mud on the drop cloths, having to store the drop cloths. Once I get done with the craft paper, I, I roll it up, fold it up, and throw it away. Here's an end shot of that craft paper. It's a fairly large roll and it's convenient because I'm not going to use it all on this project, but I'll have plenty for my next project. Here's a close-up of the corner bead. This is the outside corner. We're going to use a plastic corner bead. Notice all the little punk punctured holes in there. That's going to help the sheetrock mud stick to the corner bead. It's going to be really good. They also make this in metal, but we're, we've opted to use the plastic corner bead. We're going to try that on this project, see how it does. Here's a blow-up of our bullnose corner bead. Here's the sheetrock mud I'm going to use. This is actually called all-purpose joint compound. It's a five gallon bucket container. I've chosen this style because I'm going to mix it up directly in, in the bucket with the potato masher. And I'm going to use quite a bit for this project. So you can get this in a three gallon box form, three and a half gallon actually, and uh, um, purchase it that way and mix it up in a, in a five gallon bucket. But we chose this and this is what we're going to use. I'm also going to use some of this. This is called um, lightweight joint compound. I actually call it quick set. This is Easy Sand 90. That means it should be dry within 90 minutes so that you can put another coat on. I'm going to use this in all the deep spots on, the, on some of the walls that we're going to do. I'll show you on there. And uh, that way I can put a, an additional coat on um, on the same day within a very short time so that I can continue with my project. If I use the regular joint compound that I showed you earlier, you've got to wait pretty much all day before you can put the second coat on because that style will shrink. This is a non-shrinking item and it sets up um, very quickly. You've got to mix this up. It's in a powder form. You've got to mix it up so you only, have, you only mix up a little bit at a time, but uh, it's a really good product. It also comes in a 5 minute, 15, or 20, 30 minute, 45 minute, but we're going to do the 90 minute. That way we've got a little bit longer to work with the product. My goodie bags I got from the store with all kinds of stuff I need for this project. One aluminum six-foot ladder. 
Do you have any idea what this is? <laughs> it's, I call it a potato masher. It's really not a potato masher, but it sort of looks like one, huh? I'm gonna use this to mix up the sheetrock mud. You'll see. Sheetrock pan, sheetrock knives, putty knives, water bottle, gloves, everything you need. Are you wondering what this is? I'm not going to tell you what it is. You're just going to have to watch the video. You'll see. I'm very anxious to try this out. Here's some of the paint tools I'm going to use. It's not going to take a whole lot to do this project, so you don't have to spend a lot of money on your materials. I brought along some extra buckets in case I need them with a few other things inside there. I'll give you one guess which store I got these buckets from. Here's my well-worn nail bag. I like to use this for most of my projects. Keeps everything handy and convenient while I'm working. I also use a little waist band to protect my back. This is my bag. I haul around some of my extra tools and stuff. It's always nice to uh, have extra things so when you get to your project, if you need a little this, a little that, you got it. Here's a battery operated drill that I'm going to use. Battery charger. Comes with a flashlight. It's a nice little combo. I brought an extension cord with me too. I don't know if I'm going to end up using it, but it's always nice to be ready, just in case. This is one of my most important tools. Can you guess what it is? It's a knee pad. I use this all the time for all kinds of stuff. And the most important tool for today, that's right, gotta have the tunes. That's right, I have to eat a few things along the way. These are my little snacks I'm gonna use today. Little power bar and a banana. <laughs>